evening and a warm welcome to you all in today's webinar on national innovation day today we are immensely pleased to have our honorable vice chancellor sir with us professor dr saikot moitro and today our guest speaker is professor dr amlan chakraborty he is also director of ak chodhi school of information technology under calcutta university we have our other co panelists dr das gupta dr navarin bhattacharya and dr devashish de today uh, uh, see national innovation day is observed on the birth anniversary of our former president of india and bharat ratna late dr apj abdul kalam and uh, as you all know the objective of the event is to introduce students researchers to the important roles that innovation and creativity play in every aspect of human development innovation is also the prime driver for 17 sustainability development goals identified by the united nations in 2015 and some statistics india ranks 46th among the 132 economies featured in global innovation index 2021 right here if we see 2019 to 2021 ranking the gii ranking that is global in innovation index ranking in 2019 it was 52 uh, higher it is worse uh, lower it is better so 2019 it was 52 2020 it was 48 and 2021 it was 46 there is another parameter that is called innovation input and innovation output means what amount of uh, input you are giving for innovation and what is the innovation output if we see we have seen always that innovation input with lesser innovation input our innovation output has always been better and india ranks second among the 34 lower middle income group economies and india ranks first among the 10 economies in central and southern asia uh, with this uh, brief note we will hear more from our learned panel and guest speakers about the roles of innovation in long term sustainability and also how to drive innovation culture in our ecosystems we will uh, and now uh, go to our learned speaker who will request our honorable vice chancellor sir to say a few words before we go to the other panel members sir please okay thank you very much uh, mr mukhopadha indeed it's uh, a great occasion uh, to uh, remain present uh, virtually with uh, different uh, stalwart figures uh, in the field of technology Uh, professor omlan chakraborty is here from our side professor das gupta professor navarun bhatchaj you mr mukhopadhyay dr devashish they all are present and uh, uh, numbers of students uh, who are expected to be the uh, innovative and who are expected to take up innovative you know this um, activities in their daily practices in their professional lives because uh, innovation uh, are two types one is incremental innovation we can go for uh, you know this uh, up upgradations and development and betterment of all existing things incrementally and that requires uh, uh, that that is called uh, this incremental innovation another is breakthrough innovation which uh, changes the entire course of uh, of uh, many existing practices but this uh, uh, let me tell you a story of uh, Uh, which happened few years before a real uh, a real story uh, of uh, steep uh, osnia who is the co-founder of apple who came to india a few years before and commented that innovation is not possible serious innovation is not possible in india because the indian ecosystem is not conducive enough to give rise to serious innovation and that was uh, protested and challenged by anand mahindra anand mahindra then commented that uh, this is not the correct picture and uh, uh, in challenge he, he, he challenged uh, mr rose was that if you come again to india after some years then you will be seeing you will amazed to see the level of innovation which is happening at this country but nevertheless we are not in a, uh, in the world ranking we are not in a good position as far as this innovation is concerned 
but at the same time indians were migrating to other countries they are taking part in uh, you know this world class innovations here of the late in last few years we are seeing uh, numbers of innovative act, uh, practices uh, have been adopted by the youngsters but uh, this is not enough we need to uh, uh, now uh, walk a you know this uh, order go for a long uh, you know this distance uh, and long uh, and and uh, and this requires a serious deliberation from all of us uh, here what we have seen that um, basically uh, this culture uh, which we are following by and large it is mostly you know this embracing the status quo the uh, systems and how to get rid of it uh, it it is challenging but uh, though it is uh, this uh, innovation practice and all these things are getting more and more integrated with academic you know this um, environment academic protocols and framework but now uh, the mindset change is very much required and there uh, this uh, encouraging the students uh, encouraging the learners to take up this innovative activities in a significant numbers um, from all corners from the society from the from the from their home from this education institutes from their peer from their teachers it is required it is a 360 degree encouragement is required for uh, for for all these uh, uh, members of the learning community to take up serious innovations and there will be failure because uh, uh, no innovation can happen immediately and it uh, there can be you know these numbers of failures there are numbers of stories that uh, after uh, having a series of failures then the success uh, could be achieved because of thomas alfa edition you know after 3999 times failure he achieved the success of inventing this electric bulb and there are numbers of cases cases, uh, cases like this but here what happens uh, we immediately get rejected after testing one or two failures at the very beginning so how to manage this failure how to get ourselves more make ourselves more resilient Uh, to uh, to overcome this failure uh, uh, you know there this dejected mindset that is also a challenging thing and here we need to engage all of us uh, in in all these activities innovative activities in encouraging this our students uh, by doing something good and great as far as this innovation is concerned uh, coming out of our comfort zone only you know this um, continuing this academic practices which are being uh, which are ha- being happened uh, happening in uh, in the format in the format of you know this uh, this orthodox traditional archaic manner for so many years this is this uh, the, this is uh, uh, this uh, this is uh, maybe a you know, term as a paradigm shift as far as our culture is concerned of our looking at this entire thing is concerned but i believe that uh, Uh, though it is late but of the late uh, many of our young students they they are joining this uh, innovation bandwagon and they are coming up with uh, uh, flying colors in setting up many good practices in other cities uh, for example if you uh, go to bangalore pune and many other cities you will be you will be amazed to see that numbers of graduates from iits iims and many other places even engineering even engineering colleges they are coming forward with the different you know this uh, very very Uh, uh, you know the attractive uh, uh, you know these proposals are attractive business ideas attractive innovative ideas concepts and doing something you know this innovative uh, innovative practices of their own foregoing the traditional way of uh, leading a comfortable life so with uh, so these are all good signs so i believe that uh, here also in our systems will be able to develop that sort of culture within the shortest possible time with the involvement of different stakeholders different you know this experts mentors real life practitioners our teachers and these ecosystems which we are aspiring for uh, that will be developed in the, within the quickest possible time so with this my best wishes to all the participants who are present over here my sincere thanks serious sincere thanks to the dr omlan chakraborty who will, who will be uh, sharing his knowledge and wisdom with our participants at today's virtual conference and all these uh, all my colleagues uh, dr das gupta dr navarun bhatchaj mr pradeep mukhopadhyay dr devashish dev who have taken initiative in uh, making this innovative mindset and innovative practices really happen 
at our university. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you for sharing your valued perspectives. And uh, now we will uh, go to uh, Professor Dr. Amlan Chakravarti. But before we hand over the session to him, I would like to introduce him, although he doesn't need the introduction, but still for the benefit of those who are not knowing him the, from the student fraternity. And Dr. Amlan Chakravarti is presently professor and director of A.K. Chaudhary School of Information Technology, University of Calcutta. And additionally, he is also heading the IT and Technology Innovation Sale for Department of Higher Education, Government of West Bengal. Prior to this, he completed his postdoctoral research in Princeton University after completing his PhD from University of Calcutta in association with ISI Kolkata. He has almost 20 years of experience in engineering education and research. He is the fellow of West Bengal Academy of Science and Technology and the recipient of prestigious DST Boys Class Fellowship Award in Engineering Science in Indian National Science Academy Visiting Faculty Fellowship, then JSPS Invitation Research Award from Japan, and Erasmus Mundas Leaders Award from European Union, then Hamid Visiting Professorship from University of Cambridge, Siksha Ratna Award by Department of Higher Education, Government of West Bengal, and IBM Quantum Researches Program Access Award 2021. He has also served in various capacities in various higher education organizations, both at national and international levels. There are many more awards and accolades and achievements are there in his feather, uh, in the cap of his feather. Uh, so with this, uh, I hand over uh, the session to uh, Professor Dr. Amlan Chakravarti to take over. So thanks, uh, thanks, Mr. Mukhopadhyay, and thanks to the Honorable Vice Chancellor of Macau, Professor Shoykat Mitro, and all the key panelists of the session. So, so innovation, okay, is something which is a very difficult to to explain without doing it, okay, without actually demonstrating what is innovation. So now in the Okay, in a common sense, what we do, what we mean innovation, innovation is something that when we try to okay, try to generate a novel idea, and then this idea actually emerges, right, as a as a solution, okay, for a okay, for an important problem of the society, right, and then turns out to be an engineering or industrial product. So that's what we look forward to innovation. But but what we try to to try to develop is that that means how we can inculcate the innovations right among the among the students right or the people who are okay trying to go through the knowledge platform right how we can inculcate innovation because the products of the companies or the or the big giants what we see today they can only survive if we can have innovations right and and it is very difficult to uh, to just tell that that if you do this this these things right innovation can innovation can be achieved so, so let us set a set a target from what we should do from an academic university or an institute perspective right so so if you are trying to okay trying to do innovation you have to you have to first of all see what is innovation okay the, okay what are the what are the ways the innovations have been achieved Okay, so we know that this incubation strat incubation strategies which are coming up in every university and institutes, right? Like like we know that Macau has a has a has a very very well known innovation uh, center like Ekta, okay, the incubation center, right? So these these incubation centers are the breeding ground that okay that means of small scale innovation. Why I'm telling small scale innovation? Because because in an incubation center they are limited by certain okay certain okay certain quantity of uh, a certain number of people who can support the innovation certain certain uh, limited by the number of the resources what we have but we all but we also have to think we have to start from some point right so to start from some point I think I think the students and the 
and the faculty members and the and the greater part of the society right should look forward to this particular uh, incubation centers right where where we try to try to focus the innovation right and obviously there should be an aspiration also for innovation this is this is very primary important today morning i was i was in another another conference with pune with some organized in pune and it was it was being said the big companies like ibm microsoft and all they were saying in a particular domain and the big thing was that you should have a passion for innovation right because because the okay, because as professor moitra rightly said that innovation innovation is not that i will just uh, okay press a button and i will achieve the innovation right it it is a, it is a something which which takes time right which which has both success and failures but 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 obviously you should have a passion that in which particular domain you can contribute as an innovator because because in the, because of okay, one person right cannot be okay cannot be an expert of all right so so what we need to do we need to think some of the passion so passions if you see in terms of engineering right there are very very new technologies which are coming up like and like just before this we are discussing about a uh, Okay, very interesting technology which is already existing is a 5G technology, and then it is going above as 6 6G. When we speak with industry like Samsung and Qualcomm, they are telling that now we are working on 6G. Though it is though 5G is that is just coming into the user space, right? Research is not happening at the at the 6G space. So this is also we have to keep in mind that that we have to go ahead. Uh, okay, to establish something in innovation because because the technology, because the technology what we have today is already a, already has has established technology means it has already lot of innovations. We have to look into the newer technologies, right? To 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 see the what are the innovations can be done. For example, I've said one good technology, five G technology. And and above six G technology, where we can have the technologies like we have the virtual reality and augmented reality, right, will be coming up. And what are the innovations we can do in that? A lot of things are there. That is in every sector, right? I was just having a meeting with one of the one of the companies, one of the local local companies who are now focusing on AR and VR. We have a great thing to do in AR and VR if we look into the into the medical side, medical diagnostics, right? Without, without actually getting getting uh, okay a person physically, right? We can actually reconstruct the person, and we can also do a sort of practice operation in that particular person using this AR and VR before sorry before going to the actual actual surgery. Okay, to the person, right? That is uh, that is one of the thing, right? And and there are several things which can be done in education, right? In in your in your entertainment, right? In your in your okay in your uh, shopping and retail experience, people are now okay. The the projects are coming where we will having the having the uh, okay the buying and selling in the in the completely VR. Right, in the completely VR domain, where you have the have the person that okay that you are sitting in your maybe in your office on your room and you are just uh, just having a having a particular okay this VR goggles what we say right and using the VR goggles you can interact okay you will feel that you are in a particular retail store and you are interacting with with something which you want to buy or you are interacting with a person who will be briefing you about the about the product, so a lot of things can be done once five G comes. Once this, once this VR and AR technology is there, and and we can come up with also very noble sensors and IoT and all these ecosystems comes up, right? Another another scope of innovation, what I find at presently, okay, is coming up in a very 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 very, very great way is in terms of the computing side, right? We are we are coming to different types of computing paradigms. Right, actually, the 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 computing paradigms which are coming up very uh, very fast is something called quantum computing. We we all know, but right, we are we know that it is 
it is now it is now becoming a buzzword like machine learning so quantum computing can can create a lot of computing power right and and all this computing power which can actually generate a lot of innovative products and innovative solutions okay the solutions which were not existing earlier right we can use the power of quantum, quantum computer uh, which means that it can compute at a very large scale compared to the scale what our classical computer can do right and we can and we can uh, okay solve problems uh, okay which are which are which are very deep in our society now when we are doing innovations i think it was discussed either either mr mukhopadhyay or professor moitro said that it is very important when we are doing innovations our target principal target should be the society right and if we look in the societal societal aspect of innovation we have to look into the sustainable development goals right there are uh, okay well laid down sustainable development goals like you have the food you have the okay, you have the water you have the, okay, the agriculture you have education you have okay you have poverty right all this all these things are there in sustainable development goals and if we can target our 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 innovation innovative thoughts and from that to the engineering and 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 developing the products okay to that particular level right we can i think we can satisfy a lot i think that is if we look into the indian space right there are lot of work has been has been done in lot of lot of this uh, okay, lot of this institutes academia sida right we are doing lot of activities in this domain where where we are trying to look into smart agriculture we are looking to the smart water management uh, we are looking into the 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 uh, the effect of climate uh, the effect of climate the food security food safety so 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 all these things all these things are basically very very uh, very focused or very important in when you try to keep in the innovation right and the, and and then what we try to look into is that that is we try to we try to have some sort of knowledge resource so so innovation doesn't comes like that right you cannot say at one day that i will innovate something right it it comes with a knowledge resource now you can argue that that many of the innovators were not if we, if we, if you we go back to the history okay like bill gates or or, or okay that means or steve jobs right you can say that sir, they are innovators but they are not not very 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 well qualified in terms of the degrees right i accept that but but there are two things out of this right first thing is that obviously obviously you may not may not actually have lot of degrees to become innovator it's not required right but what is required you required to develop an intellect mind right you can you cannot you cannot argue that that bill gates or steve jobs they they didn't have the intellect mind so so intellect mind either you develop either you develop by your own process of learning or you develop by a standard process of your institutional learning whatever is the way okay that means you have to develop to the intellect mind otherwise otherwise you cannot generate this innovative thoughts right so 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 normally if we if we consider that we are very ordinary people not very exceptional people like steve jobs or 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 bill gates right we have to we have to first of all develop the knowledge the knowledge among ourselves in the in the particular sectors where we try to focus on innovations and then what we have to do we have to be hands on right innovation is is not a theoretical concept you can you can be very good in fundamental concepts but if you are trying to work as an innovator innovator should be a culture so we have to have have to have prolonged attachment with the laboratories and with experimentation right so that you can test all the that means all your all your thought process okay because because from because thought process is creativity right if you can generate something by your thought it is creativity but only creativity is not innovation from creativity right you have to churn it out in the proper form so that it can be an applicable product or an applicable applicable process right to to uh, to generate something which is good for the society so so for and especially for the students and the early researchers that if you are thinking that you want to contribute as an innovator in the in the latter part of your career 
or you want to contribute something immediately, right? You have to, right? You have to work in your labs. You have to uh, okay, work with the, uh, okay, right? you have to do the experiments, right? And Professor Mehta rightly said the experiments can have success, can have a failure. Don't, don't get, don't get actually uh, get depressed by the, uh, okay, by the failure of your experiments because, because failure of your experiments is also a learning, right? You know that why this has failed, right? It is not because, because, why I'm telling, because when you are hitting an unknown, okay, unknown goal, because innovation is initially unknown. You do something, do something, churn out something, and then you find, hey, hurrah, this is something which is very important, right? You cannot just uh, okay, decide before doing it that, okay, this, uh, this is something which I will achieve. So, so when you are going into the unknown goal, you also have to know that what are the paths shouldn't be taken and what are the paths should be taken, right? So that you can, you can squeeze down your energy to a definite direction. So, so those experiments where you fail, okay, in the path of innovation is very good. And then the, 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 then the, and then the last part of it, inspiration. Inspiration is very much required if you are innovation. So, so we have, okay, we have people like, uh, Okay, Professor Nabarun Bhattacharya, right, and some, okay, that was, and many of the people from industries, research, and academia, right, who we can, who can, that was, okay, so who can inspire, right? You, that means you, the, okay, you shouldn't, you should, right, you should meet them, you should discuss with them, you should try to look into their, look into their activities that, that are, one of the things they have developed and they have been in the, in the, in the, in the driver. Okay, of technology and engineering in in their in their professional uh, okay, professional work process, right? And get inspired that hey, can I okay, can I can I that means if right, if this person have achieved okay achieved this uh, this I can also try and I can also try my level best okay to do something as an innovator, right? Right? And, and last but not the least, the the support from the government and the support from the ecosystem, right? If you that means if you tell me, if you tell me that, sir, whether you were an innovator in your early career, right? I will say yes. That means I, that means I, after when I was doing my master's at the University of Calcutta, Department of Radio Physics and Electronics, right? I thought after getting that means after my master's, I will have my own company, right? Because, okay, because I was, I was, I was developing very intelligent softwares at that time for, for, for some of the organizations. Right, and I thought that hey, this is a hey, this is a good thing to do, and a lot of things can be done. But but the but the but the thing is that that means if you are seeing the okay, if if you are seeing the support at that point of time in the okay in the entrepreneurship support, the government right at at our point of time, say two thousand or two thousand one, when we are graduating from our masters, it was not so. But now, but now obviously you have a lot of supports at the institutional level, at the government level. Uh, right, and there are a lot of a lot of lot of schemes are available, right, into different different ways where the entrepreneurs can okay can come up, right, can come up and can and can and can try to try to show their innovations. Lot of lot of competitions are coming up. Lot of uh, okay, lot of hackathons are coming up, right, where you should participate and you should showcase your products or your innovation, whatever small it it should be. That, right, it shouldn't be small or big. The only thing in innovation is that what is the impact of this innovation, right? How this innovation can change the okay, change the present scenario. How it can help to overcome a okay okay a very basic problem in this particular domain. Okay, so 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 if you see that now the now the ecosystem right is very supportive, and we think that this ecosystem will be okay, will be more and more supportive, and many of the students now. Students now are becoming innovators, and they are launching their own entrepreneur, uh, okay, organization, entrepreneurship, and they're supported, supported by the institute, they're supported by the faculties, they're supported by the uh, by the institute itself, right? So, so, so the ecosystem. So, so at the last, what I want to say and and I want to conclude is that right, if you want to if you want to uh, okay, visualize as an innovator, which is the requirement of the day. Right, because because we are still lagging in that innovation, we are we are very much comfortable in just doing a job which is given to me, right? But I am not thinking out of the box and trying to develop something on my own. This this culture, 
the culture do have okay, do have increased, but needs to be increased to a much more extent, considering the number, okay, the population in the country what we have, and 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 if we try to try to only do innovation for our country, right, right, it is it itself that is okay. It has a large market because you know that many of the companies only target Indian market because Indian market itself is a self-sustainable market. So now if you are trying to do innovation, what do you need to do? You need to have a knowledge. Okay, you should be well, well accustomed with the knowledge of the domain. You should be well accustomed of the how you can, how you can churn, how you can, from the knowledge, how you can go through the implementation through, through various type of system models, processes, and experimentation. Okay. Hard, you should, you should, you should try to try to know how you can generate it as a business, business, a business venture, okay, to the support from okay, from a lot of lot of lot of uh, venture funding and a lot of government uh, okay support, how you can generate it as a business product, right? And and you also also need to need to get inspiration. Right from some of the people who are nearby, uh, okay, you, uh, right, and try to attend this, attend the seminars and the conferences where where innovations are being shown, so that you get uh, right, you get enough enough impetus, right, to why we are going for this, okay. So so I think that at this juncture we are in a very good play position. A lot of uh, okay ecosystem support is there, and I think that okay okay try to. Uh, okay, try to okay, try to generate that burning in the belly. What we say, right? We have to have the burning in the belly to 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 uh, okay to generate the uh, okay generate the thought process and try to act, right? And there are a lot of technologies which are coming up. Okay, it's a plethora of technologies, right? Uh, okay, and you can just uh, okay capture one of the technologies <clears throat> and get a get a good drive to generate uh, okay, the innovations. Okay, so that's all from my side. Thank you, thank you, Professor Chakravarti, uh, for your wonderful perspective and inspirational talk. Um, before we go to our the student participants, uh, I would request our learned panelists if they want to interact with you on certain points. Professor Dasgupta, would you like to interact? I think uh, it was uh, very, I think, uh, you know, you know, uh, informative and, uh, uh, you know, uh, very appropriate, uh, I think, deliberations from Professor Ch Amran Chakravarti. And I think he has uh, uh, concentrated mostly on uh, how exactly, in the first uh, I think few sentences, he declared that how exactly uh, in academics we should promote innovation. And uh, in that case, actually, I have only one thing to add uh, uh, on that, that uh, if you consider, uh, I mean, Thomas Edison's uh, uh, life history, you'll find that uh, he was divorced from school in his childhood and he was educated at home by his mother. So um, uh, even uh, USA, uh, I mean, in the USA, uh, the, I mean, teachers uh, could not identify the potential of Thomas Edison as innovator and inventor. So it happens, I think, in every society. And this is one of the main reasons uh, why India is lagging behind. We are unable to, uh, I think, identify the potential. And uh, I feel as a teacher, as an educationist, we all should encourage students, not only that, we should not underestimate any student. Maybe the last boy of your class may, be, may become the best innovator or inventor. No one can actually, uh, I think, uh, certainly say. So that is our approach. Actually, our approach itself, in fact, if you uh, consider um, uh, our, uh, this fellow, this management guru, uh, um, I just forgot his name. Okay, so he said that it, actually the problem with our education is that we only think that school, formal school is the best way of learning. Uh, I think subjects of school. But I it is not uh, about Peter uh, through experience we can. And uh, so I think this, if we increase our outlook and if we give congenial atmosphere, more and more congenial atmospheres uh, for 
promoting innovation, uh, then we can, I think, uh, have a better result. And not only that, I have another point that is why we should also see why Switzerland is holding. I came to know from the internet only why Switzerland is holding uh, the first rank for last 12 years continuously. Uh, that also we should see why they are so good. And uh, some of the things, is it possible to incorporate in our system? So that's that I think uh, from my side. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Das Gupta. Uh, thank you for your views. Uh, Professor Navarun Bhattacharya, if you want to interact with uh, uh, Professor Amlan Chakravarti, or if you have your views. No, it's a wonderful talk uh, by Amlan. And uh, I, I think it's quite informative. We touched upon a number of areas where innovation is possible. Only I want to add a few comments that uh, innovation actually uh, is different from invention. Invention uh, had been happening in uh, decades back, but now innovation is the key word. So actually innovation is aggregation of existing knowledge in science, technology, or knowledges from the society, from the people, to create a new system, new product, or new service. That is what is innovation. Like, suppose you have a Zomato by delivering food at your home. Food was there, restaurant, rest, restaurants were there, and then uh, the people used to go to rest, uh, restaurants and uh, have food. But now, this whole three, four verticals have been aggregated together to innovate a new service where you can choose your food from the restaurant of your choice and get it at your doorstep. So innovation is not invention. That's number one thing. And in the, for the student level, for students, innovation actually is a, uh, it starts from your mind. Somebody has to have really an adventurous mind. Advent, see, some, some people will find those who like trekking. Some people will find who are very much interested in wildlife uh, photography. So this kind of adventurous mind in the, uh, actually enables and prompts one to be innovative. So an adventurous people never go for general comfort in their lives. So for students, if they have to be innovative, they have to think different. They have to be adventurous in their thinking and should not be, uh, should not be having a feeling of comforts. They should go to uncomfortable zone in thinking so that innovation can take place and definitely like any adventure, it needs a lot of efforts, a lot of energy, and there are always possibilities of failure. So innovation also may hit some roadblocks in terms of failures, but definitely success will surely come for students if they sustain that adventure in their mind and set a goal where they can aggregate existing things to develop a new product or new service. But one word of caution, adventurism is not gambling. You should not be taking some risks, stating that you are uh, going to innovate some product or system, but actually the uh, gambler's mind should not drive. Adventure, uh, adventurist mind, should be the driving philosophy for under, for innovation, not a gambler's mind. Gambler's mind is a different ballgame, and that is just not, that doesn't go in line with innovative uh, ideas, innovative solutions, innovative products. And in MacOut, uh, students with MacOut, they have got the unique opportunity of having an IIC, Institute Innovation Cell, headed by our Pradeep Mukhobadhyay sir, 
and I'll urge one and all to really work in the lines of innovation, incubation, then uh, entrepreneurship with the guidance of IIC of Macau and the associated stakeholders there. And we all are there to mentor the students to really uh, go for innovative products, solutions, and becoming prospective startups in days to come. With these few words, I once again congratulate Omlan for a very elegant and nice talk and uh, leave the house open for other discussions. Pradeep Mukhavata, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Navarhan Bhattacharya, for your wonderful way of, you know, giving your thoughts. <clears throat> Just one thing was coming to my mind that in our uh, younger days, we used to be uh, told by our seniors that every day whenever you are coming to office you just think how you can uh, do your job in a better way some betterment you keep thinking you know so you know we also used to think that if we do okay we are doing it this way can we do it this way also uh, probably it will take lesser time or probably it will, I mean, lead to a better quality. So this kind of thing, we used to really think about it. And uh, that used to be encouraged by our seniors. So we, everybody, uh, whenever he thinks that, uh, okay, this is being done this way, uh, can we do it in a better way? Or is there any better way to do it? If everybody thinks like that, uh, that would lead to them uh, with developing a habit of doing some degree of innovation, you know. And uh, when there is a uh, question comes that innovation uh, doesn't always need to be uh, landed up with immediate entrepreneurship because innovation has to be there in everybody's mind, whether he is serving somewhere or whether he is having his own entrepreneurship, right? Because there is a term, you know, uh, entrepreneurship in many organizations, there are departments where product development, process development, and all these kind of departments are there. Even if you are in a job, uh, you may be given a task to do the product development or process development. So their innovativeness is essential, highly essential. So it is uh, a culture uh, which we need to develop, definitely. And uh, from senior people like us, we need to talk to uh, the students and encourage them day in and day out for innovative way of thinking to any problem or any opportunities. So definitely uh, that is being practiced in our university system. And uh, we would like to take the, you know, the support of you also at time and uh, uh, let us see uh, what are the questions uh, given by the participant let's uh, let us address some of those questions and we'll come back to the discussion again uh, professor Akroti, can you see the questions uh, yeah i can i can see the first question which is given by i think sujata bishwas Okay, Sujita Biswas. Yeah, Sujita Biswas. Yeah, the question is that uh, uh, that means uh, okay, innovation is one type of innovative idea of synonymously various activities like new economically stable to be pervasively a new IT and perfect uh, of uh, perfect collocation of main concept of innovation. So, what is basically okay? So. So the basic difference between conceptual framework and innovation is that in the case of conceptual framework, we try to, we don't test that conceptual framework, right? We have a, we feel that uh, okay, this is a, this is coming something, something out of box, right? Right, and it can, it might actually do something good in the right in terms of the uh, okay present uh, okay present state of the art or present domain, right? But when we say it's an innovation, it is we have to prove that it has improved, right? It has some sort of, uh, okay, based on some experimentation or based on some, some validation, right? We have to take our conceptual framework 
to a practice framework by which we can develop a, okay, a particular service or a particular commodity, right, which creates a value, right? And that is the, that is the migration from the conceptual framework, okay, to the innovation. Obviously, concepts should come at first, right? But, the, but it should not end there, right? Innovation has a long journey from the conceptual framework to, to actually say that it is an innovation, right? If others want to add to it, this is my take, yeah. No, I think uh, you are absolutely correct. Uh, concept from the conceptual uh, framework, you have to take it to the prototype, experiment, do the correction, and finally, uh, you can develop a minimum viable product. And this this innovation is not a I mean you know fixed kind of thing. It needs to be continuously upgraded. You know because. If you give some X, uh, customer will ask X plus. You deliver X plus, you'll have to give X plus plus. So it's a continuous improvement, continuous innovative activity will be associated to that concept. Of course, concept is the you know epicenter of that, but it needs to be converted to a you know usable thing, some tangible things, right? Yeah, I think the second question, Abhijit Bishash also is the same, the answer remains the same. Main difference between innovation and creativity, we have already, so creativity is something which we, which we tell that, okay, that means it has a beauty, that means it has, that means it has a beauty, right? Creativity means it has beauty in some sense, either the knowledge is beauty, the knowledge, knowledge, knowledge which has got into this thought process is a beauty, or, or we have some sort of, uh, signs that it can it can that it is of real value but from that from that we have to actually go through the entire process right and try to establish it right as a viable viable commodity right in the in the in the society in the okay in the in the in the work process okay, then only it can become a, okay that means a innovation I think the next question is very important. I think Chitra Proto, Chitra Proto Mal, okay, his question is very important that uh, collaboration, uh, industry, academia, this is very important. This is very important and we are struggling a bit here, right? And I think it's thanks to, uh, thanks to, okay, persons like Mr. Mukhopadhyay and Dr. Bhattacharya, right, who have been in industry and then, and then have come to academia and trying to make this particular bridge. Uh, this is very important because because what we what we do in academia fundamentally is basically we 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 generate the the knowledge right we we do research we do we try to we try to go to the courses and try to teach the courses to the students which gives the knowledge right industry industrial experts actually industry means that they are okay they are okay they are generating revenue Right, a, a thing which is generating revenue means they are, they are either either they are developing some products or their process which has a value. Right, so 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 you can all revenue only when when your outcome okay has a value. So industrial experts uh, okay generates products and generates processes which has a value. So now now from the knowledge to a value commodity, if we can churn out, then it becomes an innovation. Right. So, so that that in a very simple way means that there should be a perfect, perfect handshaking between the academic experts and the industry experts, right? Which will form a sort of, uh, which is drive this innovation process, right? Either in industry or in academia, right? Because because it's not that incubation means only it will be in academia, right? Nowadays, if you see the big companies, they're also starting their own own incubation for the startups. Right, I know some of the companies. Many of us know the companies who are doing this. So, so I think this is very important. And 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 we know that academia has certain shortcomings, industry has certain shortcomings. But this these shortcomings can be very easily waved off, right? And all the developing countries have waved off this. I will I will give you my story when I was when I was in like at Princeton doing my postdoc, right? I took a vacation. Right, I took a vacation for for maybe for fifteen days, right, and then I saw that in my in my room, okay, one other guy, other guy, the table was vacant, the other guy was there, 
right? When I joined my, okay, my office and in my table, when I joined, I saw a new person has come. So I said that, who you are, who are you? Because from my, my Indian perspective, I saw that, the, the, I thought that, oh, you will be somebody, somebody, a new postdoc researcher, or so a new PhD researcher, or maybe a new, okay, new young faculty was joined. Right, I saw that he is one of the very, very experienced guy in the industry. Right, has come to Princeton for a one year tenure. Okay, to to work with the faculties in some specific technologies. What what his his uh, organization wants to develop. So what means that the industry people coming to the academia, okay, to look into the fundamental knowledge, okay, captures that particular knowledge. Maintains the maintains the collaboration with the academia, right, and tries to generate a product out of that knowledge. Because product, product generation and product, we can only do prototype at our academia. Product generation, the quality and that type of manufacturing facilities are not available in many of our academia in, in, the, in the abroad also in the good institutes also. So so okay. So best thing is that okay if we are okay if I am a student. Right. If my university gives me an opportunity to to get into a knowledge space, right, and and then the then the in the then the academy, then my institute tells me that hey, these are the industries where where we have collaborations, right. You can take this knowledge, and if we have some innovative process through our collaborations, you can reach out to those industries and can and can actually have a real a real test of your product, right, or or, or on in a university, I set up a center where there are people like, uh, like Mr. Mukhopadhyay, Dr. Bhattacharya, and, and some other people, experts in industries are there. They will guide you that how you can take this, take this knowledge okay, to, the, to the product level thing. I think and this is very important, and this can be done in multiple ways. Right? We, have to take, we have to take one step forward. The academy has to take one step forward, and industry also have to take one, one step forward. And join hands and 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 to do this. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next question comes from Anamika Vishwas. Yeah, story books and books. I think that is okay. It is not a syllabi by by which you can you can tell that if I can if I complete the ten courses, okay, ten chapters of this book, I can be an innovator. Right. There is no such uh, no such blueprint, but obviously there are storybooks. You can go to the life of the okay of the innovators in India and abroad, and you can and you can learn their you can learn that their passion. As I said, the first point: passion, struggle, right? How they have okay learned learned on their own way, right? And what are the opportunities they have they have found, right? And ultimately they have. Okay, they have found their found their goal achieved. Okay, so there are three, four steps, right? As Dr. Varadkar also have said that it should be, okay, it shouldn't be a very very well defined process. It can be a sort of a little bit you have to walk around here and there, right? A walk around is not physical walk around. Walk around in the in the thought process, right? Maybe one thought process fails, another thought process okay comes up, and you take that process. So you have to do a lot of things. Right and that, right and ultimately you have to, okay, you have to get the things. So, so there are some, there are a lot of success stories out there, right? Maybe a different, maybe uh, we we are now seeing that a lot of lot of lot of successful entrepreneurs are coming just out of the high school, right? So, so these uh, these stories can can inspire you. Yes. Thank you. Arindam Das has put a question. Let's see. Okay, application spectrum for two to five G expansion of work areas in terms of information security. Yes, yes, yes. This is this is this this. So so communication communication was little bit little bit uh, what I can say slow right for the last maybe five or eight years that more the people were in computing side uh, because machine learning emerged, IoT emerged, cloud services emerged. Right, people uh, people were drawn more towards computing. But I think with the emergence of 5G and then progress towards 6G, we'll again see a lot of, okay, lot of aspirations in the communication domain. Okay, because, because all your applications, right, all your data, all your applications which require data communication, 
right? That means all your infrastructures for communication will get updated. Might not be entirely changed, as we are discussing earlier. Might not be entirely changed, but we do a lot of upgradations, right? In terms of services, in terms of products, right? In terms of, in terms of the okay, it, user interface. So, so, so obviously this, this will be a very, uh, uh, okay, very, very lively domain for the next maybe five to eight years, right? The 5G space, right? And, and obviously as 5G tells, tells that you have a large amount of, that is, okay, you can, you can do communication with a, with a much more number of devices and systems than you could have done in 5G, 4G. And you can communicate the higher, higher data rate in a, in a higher data rate. So wherever there is data, security is the important thing, right? Where, wherever your data communication and you, and as you have the heterogeneous type of architectures for data communication, once the, the 5G is there, because different types of nodes will be coming, different types of uh, networks will be coming at the user end. So, so the heterogeneity, the, the data space, right? And the importance also, because now data will be communicated, which will be your medical data. Data will be communicated of your navigational data. Right, data will be communicated of your, of your, of your, of your things inside your house, inside your office. So these are very precious data. If someone, if someone can capture all this data, right, he can, he can create a sort of virtual avatar, okay, virtual avatar of you, right, and can do lot many things. So, 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 so the security, uh, right, obviously will be in place, and lot of, and lot of, I think, thought process and new. New thought process will come up in the in the security also, and so what you have correctly said that it is it, really a lot of things will come in the security also, right in the five G and six G space. More if we use five G or six G means more data or more information will be exposed in the network. So more data information are exposed in the network means more you are vulnerable. Everybody is vulnerable. So more, I mean, you know, strong security network, information security and network security has to be put in place and more such devices process will emerge. Uh, Srijipa has uh, put a, another question. <laughs> academic credentials. <laughs> See, academic credentials can, can, give you, can, can give you the opportunity to learn different domains. Right. If you are if you are doing a uh, that means a bachelor's, you can learn some of the fundamental thing. If you are doing a master's, you can do a specialized thing. Right. If you are doing a PhD, you can actually solve a research problem. So these are the three three things what we do in university. Right. Fundamental, advanced, and solving a research problem. So so now this this obviously helps you, but it, but it is not guaranteed. Okay, there are people who has only crossed these levels can only be innovated. Right, it is not. It is not always true. A particular person who has the thought process, and who can capture the knowledge, okay, by by interaction, by its own means, right, he or she can also be knowledgeable enough, right, to to apply that knowledge and to and to generate an innovation. So, so obviously, it's the it's the it's the that means the platform of academia gives you a push. Okay, but if somebody doesn't have the push, it doesn't. We cannot neglect somebody that hey, he has come with a novel innovation. He doesn't have any formal university degree. It's, it's whether he will accept it or not, right? It's not like that. Yes. Thank you. Just wanted to say that you know, for innovation, let us uh, develop a habit of you know always looking for something to do in an alternative way. Uh, which would be easier, less time taking, less uh, economic, I mean, more economic, but less costly. So if we keep on thinking that for our every kind of activities, uh, then, you know, we will develop such habits and we'll try to put it in our technological domain also, whatever we were thinking. So, uh, if anybody else has any questions, we will wait. Otherwise, uh, uh, let's let me see. Last time, is there any more question? Uh, okay, fine. There is no more questions. 
so um, uh, thank you professor amlan chakravarti thank you for your valued time and valued perspective and uh, we will definitely look forward to your such support we request you to come down to our campus also sometime and talk to our student in person and i will personally be in touch with you to explore what all we can do uh, together with higher education department and molana abul kalam azad university of technology so that we will explore and talk offline and uh, uh, thank you so much uh, i mean you know for your such uh, short time uh, notice presence uh, Yes. just i have a just have one point mr mukhopadhyay that means that means i have a i have just just a point that whether whether the whether the innovation cell what uh, what macau uh, has already instituted yes. can it support the uh, students from other university also or it is only mandated that you will be supporting students of your university presently we are doing it for our university but we always encourage them and we do not Uh, I mean, you know, discourage anybody. Anybody, uh, FO, I mean, affiliated college. If they connect us, we always encourage them. We do the mentoring for them. Right? Okay, because what I'm saying, what I am saying is that there are there are many universities who are coming up, right, mm -hmm. which doesn't have have this type of okay set up what you have. Okay, maybe the new newer universities. There are maybe some students maybe. Uh, maybe interested that whether you can also help them extend uh, extend actually, your help uh, actually that uh, institute innovation cell as uh, which is under the you know uh, guidance of the central uh, innovation cell of this government of uh, india actually okay. ministry of education mm -hmm. and uh, they have the mandate they are separate acting looking at the institute separately okay, okay. so okay. that is one thing but over and above we can also extend our facilities and guidance Uh, to other institutions also okay there is nothing um, i think special in that and okay. although institute i think you know you or we have formally some cell but actually innovation also takes place in laboratories and of the department right so there is nothing wrong actually every any other university also can approach us and we can also we do not do any distinction help. between the students you know whether perfect your ce is from our institute or from some perfect. other and 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 are you also also helping your students to go for patenting copyright to this particular cell yes, yes we are trying uh, but you know uh, we have uh, shifted our campus from kolkata to huringhata uh, mm -hmm. and uh, many things are coming up and we have also diversified we have yeah. also i will just i will just give you one one input here that the state uh, state uh, department of science and technology okay they have they have which is uh, which is in in okay in salt lake okay uh, okay they have they have started a technology innovation cell right i can connect i can connect mr mukhopadhyay sure, sure. with yes, the person yes. who yes. is uh, okay who is in charge uh, charge of technology innovation cell and then you can find that there are some schemes right of of wbdst by which wbdst supports this copyright and mm -hmm. and patenting right and you can okay, okay you can work together right sure. then i think sure. something we will we'll communicate with you and right. look, we'll be right. very happy to uh, collaborate with your i think higher education cell and we'll do it. sure, sure. Sure. Thank you. Uh, if anybody has anything to deliver it, otherwise, uh, with the permission of our honourable vice chancellor sir and fellow panelists, I once again uh, thank uh, Professor Amlan Chakravarti and close the session for the day. And would look forward to some such sessions again in future. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very thank much. You thank, thank you. 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 Thank you.